So I spent some time with my new little 7-inch laptop, and I have to say, I'm still confused as to why this exists. I like the concept of an ultra-portable computer, but this feels like it's a first-generation product and has some notable quirks that just make it odd. But I received a lot of questions and requests in the comments of the original video. So here's my opinion on this device. It feels durable. It doesn't feel like it'll break if you use it frequently. There's no flexing or soft plastic feel to it. If you leave it in a cool room, the frame feels cool to the touch. So it's definitely full aluminum. While this is under load, the bottom can get really warm. It uses the aluminum chassis as part of the heat sink, it seems like. So this might be a good heater during the winter, but uh, if you're wearing shorts, this could get really warm on the legs. The weight is mostly at the bottom of this unit. It doesn't feel like it's gonna tip over when you're typing on it. It could be on a desk, it could be on the couch. It feels like it's sturdy and stays put. The mouse button is a good option for short-term use if you don't have a mouse of your own or need something more precise than your finger on the touchscreen. But for the most part, you wanna have some sort of Bluetooth mouse or wireless mouse or something with it. The keyboard is a membrane style. There's no switches that you can replace to adjust the clickiness. It's a modified style of keyboard, which is expected for a smaller device. The majority of the letter keys are not much smaller from other full-size keyboards I've tried. It's the number and the special keys that are all smaller and they're moved around the board, so it takes some getting used to. I've noticed that the keystrokes don't always register. Also, there's no tactile difference between the regular keys and the power button. I found myself just having to hold the power button down until I hear the fan turn on to know that it's powering on. Speaking of the fan, this does move some air pretty well to cool the unit. It's also not completely quiet. You can hear it when it's speeding up and you need to get used to it because unless the unit is hibernating, that fan sounds like it's full speed. Full speed all the time. All right, the battery. The good thing about the battery is that, uh, well, they say it lasts three hours of use and they're honest about that. I've easily gotten that and then some while doing some simple web browsing or coding. But anything that puts it under load, it does suck up power pretty, pretty quickly, which goes to the bad part, which is that charge port. This using a barrel jack to charge limits its actual use when you combine it with the battery life. I have no issue with it having a smaller battery if it was able to be charged on the go with a portable power pack or by a USB-C or hell, even with a micro USB, something. Something that is also portable. But if you take this with you on a bus to a coffee shop, unless you pack that large plug for it, you'll be in battery saver mode on the bus ride back home. The audio. So we're talking about the speakers and the microphone. The good. It has them. The okay. Sound from the speaker is a tinny. Which is to be expected from a small device like this. You're not gonna get giant USB speakers or anything fancy. The bad. Every so often you hear a pop sound that seems to come from the speakers. If you mute the device, it doesn't happen. But if the volume's on, it randomly occurs. The microphone, it's not consistent and it picks up the sound of the fan when it's moving, which the fan is consistently moving. This thing has a mini HDMI port in the back. Actually not too bad. You can hook it up to a monitor, mirror your display. It doesn't seem to have much latency or any issues with it. So I really don't have anything to complain about this. It works decent. I tried testing it 4K video, other than it having a smaller resolution to kind of match this, the laptop screen. It seemed okay to me. I've worked with much worse, so this is fine. Some of the oddities. These are the things that I have no idea why they're set up like this. It comes set up in the admin account right out of the box. Nothing like the standard Windows 11 setup. The SSD, it's set up as partitioned. So I have a 256 SSD that's split three ways. They did 50 gigabytes for Windows, 69 gigabytes for the local drive, and 119 gigabytes for the new volume. I'm not a computer expert, but I know that for SSDs, there's really no reason to partition them. It just seems like extra work and extra modifications that don't need to be there. Another thing that's extra is I found this text document called Dump Stack. It didn't allow me to open it, which was concerning at first. I had to Google what it was and I found it's supposed to be a hidden file, but it's visible. So Windows has been modified and has hidden files visible. That might not mean anything since it originally comes set up in the admin account, but it's not how other larger OEMs set up their PCs, and it's just one more odd setup choice that doesn't make any sense. I didn't mention in the unboxing video, but there is a web camera that's placed on the left-hand side of the screen. It's not great. 
basically everyone has a smartphone these days, and any modern phone has a better front-facing camera than this. The camera isn't good enough to use Windows Hello to log in, so I'm not sure why it's really here other than a selling point to say it has one. One of the questions I got quite a few times is can it run Linux? There is a comment about someone installing Ubuntu Linux and, oh, something about the battery not lasting long. So there's that. For me, I'm not very proficient in Linux, so I would more than likely brick the PC. I've used Raspbian for a bit, and I would say maybe it's easier to just get a Pi and... Uh, oh yeah, never mind. So I tried Minecraft on it, and it wasn't horrible. Running Minecraft on the normal settings seems okay. When it first loads the game, the CPU usage spikes up dramatically. Minecraft by itself uses about 60% of this little Celeron. Once it's done with the initial loading, it reduces and levels out. On the smaller screen, it actually doesn't look too bad. It performed well, but that was on some really reduced settings. The chunk loading was close and everything was very basic. After about an hour and a half, the battery was down to 35% from close to 95 when I started. The bottom of the unit was also ridiculously hot. I've also seen some comments of people talking about comparing it to an EPC. So this is the seven inch laptop next to an Asus EPC from the Jurassic age, I would say. I've used this thing up pretty substantially. It's been beat up pretty well. I used to carry this thing everywhere. And I was kind of hoping that this mini laptop would kind of semi replace this, but uh, it can't. There's just too many weird issues. While researching for this video, I did find a listing on Alibaba for this device. It looks like this is the actual manufacturing company for these laptops. They wholesale them for $200 if you buy bulk quantities. They will even put your company logo on them for free if you want. How nice of them. The very first thing I'm going to do after this is try to reinstall Windows. <laughs> if you go in settings, it says this maintained by your business administrator, which is odd. So then I figured I would try and just get it straight from the command line. And it seems like there is no activation key, at least nothing on this device. So I'm going to have to contact the seller and see if I can get an activation key. So for now, I'm at a standstill. I can't recommend it for everyday use. This can't be your primary computer. I'm thinking about taking it apart or taking the back plate off and seeing what's inside. If that is something you're interested in, make sure you're subscribed so you can be notified when it gets posted. Give this video a like if you liked it or dislike if you didn't. If you didn't, let me know how I can improve it. Thank you everyone for watching and until next time, bye.